5.3. We'll be solving logarithms by converting these into exponentials. Okay. To convert this to exponential, this becomes our base, and this becomes our power, and this becomes our answer. So, to find x, we need to raise this to the fourth power. So, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. And so x is 1 16. Here, we have a base of 4, so we write the exponential base of 4, and 1 half as a power. And then we'll make this equivalent to x. Um, powers can be, or fractional exponents can be converted into roots. So this will be, the 2 will be used as a root, and the 1, the, um, the numerator, will be used as the power. Well, a square root is also root prime. This represents a square root, and 4 to the first power is simply 4. So the square root of 4 is a being 2. And that's our x. Next, here we see there's a missing base. Whenever there's a missing base, the base is assumed to be 10. So this would be 10 to the x, equaling this argument right here. Make like that the answer. And from here, I'm going to convert this into a fraction. So this will be 1, and this is on one place over, so this will be 10. Okay, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of this and make it into a 10. But now we'll be to the first negative 1 power. Since we have the same basis, we can equate the exponents. So x equals negative 1. Number 8. Okay, we have a base of 2. We're going to use the x as the exponent. And this will all equal 0.125. Now, I want to convert this decimal into a fraction. So this will be numerator of 125. And since we have three places behind the decimal, the denominator will be 1,000. Okay, now, let's reduce this, or simplify this by 25. 25 goes into the numerator, let's see here, for five times. And 25 would go into the denominator, let's see, 40 times. And that will still simplify into 1 8. Okay. And then I take the reciprocal of my 1 8, and I'll get 8 to the negative 1 power. Then my common base for 2 and 8 would be 2. This will remain 2 to the x power, and this will, become, this will represent 8 by 2 to the third power times the negative 1. So we have 2 to the negative third power, and this implies x is negative 3.